Since starting my YouTube channel, I get asked a lot of questions. The questions come in the comments below, I get them in email, I get them on Facebook and Instagram. A lot of them, I can usually direct them to a video that I've already made, or I can answer it in a couple of lines, or I use them in my Q&A, but some questions just need a little bit more visuals. So that's what this new segment is going to be about. I'm calling it the quilting coach. So grab your cup of coffee and stick with me while I show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown of Just Get It Done Quilts. I bring you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you wanna make. And if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button. Today is my first new segment in a little while. I get asked lots of questions that I just cannot answer in an email. Let's just start with the first one. Okay, from Penny and Kent. She has asked me, how do I get the creases out of my fabric? I use steam, but it just doesn't seem to work. The trick is not to use steam. You can be ironing away on fabric, using steam, giving it as much as you've got, and then you flip it over and you find that it still has some deep creases. How do you fix it? Well, you'll be surprised, but you don't use steam on your iron. What you need to do is have a spray bottle of water and you spray on your fabric just spray it on, stand back for a couple of seconds and let it just saturate the fabric. And then you take a dry iron, a hot dry iron, and you press. And it works. You know I speed it up for the camera, but I timed it. This takes about 40 seconds. Now, if it's a deep crease on the back of your fabric while you're a long arming, you don't actually have to add heat. Um, as you put it on the long arm, just spritz it with water right down that center crease and the tension will make it go away. So Jennifer wrote me a lovely email saying that she saw a pretty barn quilt block and she decided to make it into a quilt. Her practice block was beautiful, but as she was making more and trying to turn it into a big quilt, her center lines were just not lining up as well as in her test block. So she wrote me asking if I had any strategies to help keep them lined up. So this is the barn quilt block that Jennifer is talking about. It's fairly complex. It's got flying geese, it's got four patches, and in the center has a block called the country road block. Jennifer looked it up. And the intersections where she's having the most trouble with is where those four black dots are. And the country road block can be broken down into four blocks that look like this. That's two squares of fabric A plus one square of fabric B, four half square triangles of fabric C, and then two half square triangles of fabric B. We sew two HSTs to the right side of the block. I always sew from a right angle to the tip. And don't hesitate to use something pointy, whether it be tweezers or a cuticle stick or a pin, just to keep this tail from stretching and distorting. With these HSTs, you must be careful there's no distortion, which can happen so easily when you iron. So I don't even iron the tips on these ones. I just iron the seam. Then we sew the other HSTs to the left side of the blocks. Then we sew the top to the middle, making sure that that middle seam is nested neatly. And then the bottom to the middle. And when I'm sewing this stage, I can just clip that tip off. As I'm sewing, I make sure all pieces of my fabric are butted up right to that sewing ledge to ensure that I have an accurate quarter inch seam. If you want to watch my video on how to make a sewing ledge or some of my other foundational videos, I'll leave a link in the notes below. And the middle part of the block is done. This is what I call a compound block. A compound block for me is a block within a block. So your outer block won't be right unless your inside is accurate. And in Jennifer's case, she's got multiple compounding to do. So accuracy and precision are key to this block. 
So I'm trimming up my inside block, making sure that the sides are on a 45, so my HSTs go on properly. When I go to square up my block, I'm very pleased to find all my points are in the right place. So I continue with the other three. Now, when I made four of them and I put them together, I did manage to get the seams lined up, but there were a couple of issues with it, mainly ironing. But that's why you make a test block. You find out the right way to iron, where are the troublesome areas. And I realized that these points were just so darn important to this block. So I made another one. But I'll be honest, I'm less than happy with my second. It was more flat, more square, but my accuracy was off. So I put it aside, I went to bed, hoping that sleeping on it would give me some more ideas. So my solution the next day was to make a map. So I made a map that I could put my pieces down on top of and measure my, my accuracy against as I progressed through the block. I also cut out a second one and then trimmed it down so I had a sub map to ensure I had the correct size of the inner block before I added the HSTs. I made two more sets of blocks and I was able to catch some minor issues before they became big issues and I could see it in my final accuracy. So this is my strategy that I came up with. For this block. Make sure you're doing all the same stage for all the blocks at the same time. Doing multiples of the same stage at the same time at once will help your accuracy because you're doing exactly the same step. Don't hesitate to mark those points on the corner of those squares so that you know while you're sewing that you're hitting your target. And the third one is do a block map. I make mine in Illustrator, but you can simply copy one onto cardboard so that you know as you're progressing through the block that you're accurate at every single stage. So there's no miracle cure here, but I hope these steps will help you with your precision and accuracy. Terry wrote me and said, I want to put my quilt blocks on point. How do I calculate the set in triangle size? What are set in triangles? When you put your blocks on point, you need these beige triangles to make your quilt square again. You use two types, a quarter square triangle and a half square triangle. And which one we use depends on which way the grain is lying. Fabric has two grains. The straight of grain is the least stretchy and it runs parallel to the selvages. Then we have cross grain and that runs from selvage to selvage. The bias is any diagonal cut through the fabric and is very stretchy. In a quarter square triangle, the grain runs along the long side. In a half square triangle, the grain runs along the short sides. So this is a QST, a quarter square triangle, and the grain is along here. And here is the bias on these two sides. And this is an HST. Now you can even compare the grain between these two sides. This must be the straight of grain. This must be the cross grain because there's just a little bit of give. And then here is the bias. For your quilt to keep its shape, you want that grain line on the outside edge. So we use the quarter square triangles on both sides, top and bottom. And then we use the half square triangles in the corners. First, we measure the diagonal of the finished block. For an example, we'll use one that's eight inches. Then you cut a square, the finished diagonal size plus one and a quarter inches. So for our example, that's nine and a quarter inches. Then you cut the square on the diagonal, and then you cut the square on the other diagonal. This makes a set of four, a top, a bottom, a left, and a right. This means directional fabrics are not a problem. If your quilt is square, it also makes quick work of calculating how many squares you need because you just need to count down one side. For the calculation of the HSTs, we'll need that finished block diagonal again, and we'll cut two squares, half the diagonal size plus seven eighths. And we'll use the same example so we need two squares, 
4 and 7 eighths. We cut one square on one diagonal, and then we cut the other square on the opposite diagonal, which gives us one for every corner, and that's also great for directional prints. You can also use these calculations for borders with blocks on point that need set in triangles. So many people have asked me, where do I find the notes below? The majority of people watch my videos on a mobile device, whether that be an iPad or a smartphone. Right beside the video title is a small little gray triangle. If you click on that, the notes that I'm talking about will appear. So down here you have the published date. So this is where I put links to videos that I've referenced before. If I've talked about any item that you want to possibly purchase, I put the link down below there. If I've used a pattern from another quilter, I often put the link down there too if I know it. So always check out the notes. There's lots of good stuff in there. While we're here looking at YouTube features, here's a couple more. If you hit the pause button while the video is playing, these three dots appear in the top right corner. This is where you can turn on and off your captions and speed up or slow down the playback speed. You can also tap your screen and this red ball will appear so you can scrub through forwards and backwards through the video in case you've missed anything. Thank you so much for showing up today. It's been a roller coaster couple of weeks and uh, I'm glad to be back in the saddle. If you have any questions that you want me to answer, just send me an email at info at just get it done quilts and put in the subject line, Coach Karen. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell if you want to be notified by YouTube when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts. And of course, my website at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care, and I'll see you next time.